Yo, what is up, guys? You're listening to The Vavis Podcast, a podcast that answers the unanswered. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Vavis Podcast. So today, I'd like to take this time to actually get you guys to subscribe. Only 10% of you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel, which is kind of disappointing of how much quality and how much effort I'm putting out to these podcasts. So I will appreciate it if you guys can subscribe. And that's all I ask for. <laughs> Right, so let's waste no time and actually introduce the guest and get this podcast starting. So let's go. Right, so Mark, a local produ- a local music producer that has a huge portfolio of working with artists locally and internationally. He has produced songs that has reached the top 21 and top 24 in Angura Lagu Indi, the hip hop genre indie song award. His music also appeared on Sims 4, The Game, Candy Mine by Shah and Senna. Right, welcome. Welcome to the Waves Thank Podcast, you. man. Thank you, Derek. Um, appreciate you for having me on this. Uh, it's my first time ever doing this kind of thing, so yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but it's calm. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's nothing to be, to, yeah. to be nervous, man. I mean, it's just a casual conversation, of course. Me just asking questions. Actually, right, the first time we met, we ex- we actually exchanged Instagram accounts. Yeah, we did. We did. So when I got back home, mm-hmm. I, ch- I looked over your your Instagram account yeah. and I checked and I saw like, wow, you actually produce music, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it got me thinking. Well, I gotta get this guy in because <laughs> it's so unique. A nineteen year old producing music at I such a young that. age. Yeah. So it's something extraordinary uh, to me, of course. And yeah, so here we are today. <laughs> Right, so you have worked with many artists, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. local, uh, Datok Mo, yeah, Young Kai, yep. uh, Gucci Min, right? Yeah, Gucci Min. Gucci Min. Yeah. And internationally, we got Aero Naga- Na- Nayaka. Nayaga. Yeah. Wow, these names are quite <laughs> interesting. Huh? Um, we got BG. BG Glock. BG Glock. Yeah, so these um, artists, yeah. Are pretty well known in their respective field, yeah. their countries. Yeah. So, how does it feel working with these uh, artists? Honestly, like I, when I stepped into producing for people, I never knew that I could reach this level of like producing for this kind of artist. Right. So it's pretty surreal. Even though they're not super well known, it still feels weird to me that I can produce for this level of like artists right. internationally and locally as well. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I was quite surprised, like, later did I know, right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. my classmate mm-hmm. is actually the producer of the song that made it into Sims 4, yeah. which was a big hit in yeah. Malaysia, especially in Hits yeah. FM, many media coverage on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was like, wow, I can't believe, man. <laughs> on that day itself, when I found out that yeah. you were the producer, yeah. I was like, damn, my producer being my group mate. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is yeah. insane. So... Yeah, man. So, yeah. without further ado, let's get straight to the questions. Sure. So, h- how and where did you learn what you do best? Um, I started out like when I was 13. So, right now I'm 19. So, if you calculate it back about six years ago, I started producing. And um, oh, I started downloading this software called FL Studio. It's like available everywhere and all producers use it. So, I started with that. And then I started with the demo version. And I used that until like until two, three years ago. I actually got like the real edition so I've been using like the crack one for like the longest time actually <laughs> and a lot of my biggest songs were made on that version as well so it's oh, pretty crazy um, but yeah I just started when I was 13 as jokes with my friend and then su- suddenly I just got like the inspiration during COVID to start working with artists you know like local artists at first and yeah some people are reaching out to me and stuff like that on Instagram like yo let's work and let's tap in and stuff like that so yeah, it was pretty exciting and I was like, wow, this is pretty crazy. I can work with people. And I just started sending beats to them and slowly it just boosted my portfolio as producer, like locally. And and as like a beat maker as well. So yeah. Wow, That's how I started, yeah. Damn. Yeah. So what is one undeniable challenge you face climbing up the <laughs> ladder? Uh I would say hmm there aren't many like uh, big problems when I came up because when I first came up in this industry like there was not much competition in the field because 
Right now it's definitely different because it's more saturated. But back then it was very like easy. If you uh, if you make a song with a certain artist that everyone knows, then everyone's bound to follow you and you know get to know you and ask for your beats and stuff like that. So yeah, I wouldn't say that was much of a problem, but um, it wasn't easy. It just took a lot of time and effort and dedication to just stick to making beats and networking with a lot of different people like locally. So yeah. yeah. So you are currently in college right now. Yeah. You have your social life and all. So mm-hmm. how do you balance doing what you do best yeah. along with college and everything else in your life right now? Uh, honestly, it isn't that difficult. Like, it's really just about if you if I continue liking like what I'm doing, like producing, beat making, all this. I would just say I do it whenever I'm free. Like, I do have a lot of free time, honestly, because I'm in foundation right now, and it's you. You do have a lot of time. Obviously, you do have assignments and stuff, but. You do set assign set time apart for those things as well, but regularly on the weekends or even after school, I head back and I just if I have like a hit of inspiration, I'm just like, let's cook up, let's get on my laptop and just like start making stuff, you know. <laughs> so it's that simple. It's not that crazy, but um, yeah, there are times where I just don't um feel inspiration or I don't have the time to do stuff. So when those things happen, I just try to take a break mm-hmm. and like if I feel that. I'm forcing it then I just definitely cool it down a bit and you know get back to it like the next week or something uh, but yeah I just try to stay consistent as much as I can just try and make you know few beats a week or last time I used to do like 10 beats in a day wow. but that was before like I started college and all this so yeah last time I had a lot of time yeah so averagely right mm. how long does it take you to yeah. make a single beat uh, well it depends um, I would say on average 10 minutes wow. It can go as fast as 5 minutes as well Wow Damn Yeah It can start from like 5 minutes All the way to an hour It depends on Like How I'm trying to make the beat Or what kind of beat I'm making You know Like my usual Typical trap stuff um, For all the local artists and stuff I usually go like with 10 minutes 20 minutes Max on a beat If I Also if I waste like Too much time on a beat I'm just like I scrap it Immediately I don't wait Like anymore And I just like Don't waste my time on it So Yeah once it gets Past a certain point Of like 30 minutes I just stop making it And make a new one Ah I see So It's more of the flow right Yeah it's definitely more of the flow Yeah yeah yeah. If I feel it's weird I just scrap it immediately Yeah (laughs) Right so I realised that As far as I analyse The amount of artists You worked with And their main genres Your main genre As of a music producer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is hip hop and rap Is that right Yeah that's correct so what made you choose that genre? I see. Uh, well, it's interesting because when I first started out, that's all I wanted to make. And oh. now I feel like I'm branching out into different things. But when I first started, it was all I listened to. Like all my favorite artists were making trap stuff like Drake, Travis, 21 Savage. Um, my favorite producers as well, as well, like when I first started, they were all trap producers like Metro Boomin, uh, Murda, Beats. Um, yeah, plenty of producers, but what made me got into it is because I generally just like the genre so that's what made me dive into hip hop and like trap yeah right so you have reached the top um, 21 24 yeah. in the Angura Lago Indie yeah so that was just last year right uh, it was actually not last year it was like two months ago oh it was two months ago yeah so sorry yeah it's fine it's fine so did it felt like um did did it feel like your hard work actually paid off and yeah definitely definitely i would say so like even i'm sure we are podcasting you would feel like you do a good job like (laughs) if you record like so many people right yeah yeah. but for me it was yeah it was definitely a surreal moment because i've ended up on a couple of these award shows before and anugra is one of the ones that i was quite like interested in because i only recently heard about it like last year Mm. from um an artist that i work with young kai he told me about it and i was like oh what's this and then i researched about it more and yeah it was a pretty big thing in like in the underground scene uh locally so when i first got into it i was like oh okay this is pretty cool i got not only one song there but two songs and two different artists so i was pretty excited and i thought i would have like a good shot at you know getting into semi-finals or finals and that i did actually with uh one song uh, which was candy mine with sha and senna we got into like the top five so i was yeah pretty proud of that you know Definitely. Right, so you have worked with 
different artists locally, internationally. So do, is one of the challenges working with, uh, especially internationally artists, yeah. is one of the challenges, uh, different native languages, mm -hmm. language barrier? Right. I would say the funny thing is that the hardest part about working with artists is, I mean, sorry, um, it's not working with international artists that is the hardest, it's working with local artists. Because oh. it's either they speak mainly Malay or Chinese, and I'm a banana. <laughs> so I only mainly speak English to these guys, right? So, but thank God, even if I speak English to these guys, they can understand me. So, and they like totally understand that I can't speak it. So like with Dato Mo, for example, he's like very, his music's all Chinese and yeah. he, con he thought I was like, super Chinese lah, you know, so he communicated to me in Chinese and then uh, people like uh, Kwai, some people that I work with like Kwai, uh, City Boys and all these, they're more Malay, mm. you know, so they're all like Malay artists, so they all uh, communicated with me in Malay at first and then I realized, oh shit, oh, are we allowed to swear by the way? Yeah, sure, Okay, sure. but like, yeah, when I first worked with all these people, I was just like, damn, okay, how am I going to communicate with all these people? But eventually, they just all spoke English to me, so I was like, okay, it's calm. But with international artists, they mainly speak English to me, right? So they understand that I'm from Malaysia as well. Like um, Ariel Nayaka, Rai Putra, they all speak English and they're all totally fine with it. So yeah, it's not much of a problem. It's more of a problem locally, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See. So I think there's certain expectation like being local. So Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Because That's why I faced a lot of like, <laughs> you know, backlash from it before from like the artists I work with. So did it uh, affected your process of working with them like in the in, in the sense of like giving them uh, an impression of probably turning them down um not really not no, really I wouldn't say so because uh, regardless of language I feel like we all manage to work together because we are all on the same page about one thing which is we just want to make music right so yeah. regardless of language we still try to make it work and even if they couldn't speak great English for some people we still tried our best to communicate and we all got our points across, yeah. So it's still good. Right. So tell me more about how does, how do you sell your beats? Is it mm. in a marketplace? Is it like? Well, I would say for me personally, I sell my beats privately to artists right. who I work with. Okay. So how I do it is when I get in contact with an artist, I constantly like send them beats and stuff mm. over WhatsApp or whatever, Telegram. And then if they like something, they record over it. Or even before that, if some rare cases, they straight away buy the beat before they record it, wow. record over it. So when they purchase it, they just, it's like a, there's no like labels in between to get like, you know, um, it doesn't get messy basically. So it's just, I tell you my price, they pay me through whatever way they want, PayPal or whatever. And yeah, that's how we settle it. But majority of producers, which I know, like overseas and stuff, like internationally, the people I work, uh, look up to, they usually sell their beats in like a marketplace. Like this thing, this thing called uh, BeatStars. It's like an online platform where people, all sorts of producers upload type beats and stuff like that onto that website to sell. I tried it, but personally it wasn't for me. Um, so that's why I just rerouted and went with like the artist option instead. Yeah. So, where do you see yourself in um, music producing mm. in next in the next five years? I would say the next five years. Um, I would definitely plan to be an international producer instead of just being known as like a Malaysian producer. Obviously, I would still be proud to say that I'm a Malaysian producer, but I would, would like to work with more international artists, that's for sure, and like um, just get my portfolio expanded. Because recently, like over the past few years, I've been only working with local artists. Mm. Some around Southeast Asia region, but I want to tap into like America, Europe, UK, and all these places, even like South America. Um, yeah, all these places would be interesting to work with, but. Yeah, for now, it's just trying to expand my portfolio and just try to work with as many people as I can and just try to go for like my dream targets as well. Yeah. That's great. So, then, you, you're talking about expanding your portfolio mm -hmm. overseas, mm -hmm. especially in America, right? Yeah. So, what is your um, dream artist that you'd like to work with in the future? Uh, it changes all the time. It changes all the time, but... 
if you don't mind me, I'm just gonna go on my Spotify real quick. I'm just gonna look up some people that I've been yeah. listening to. But personally, like for the past few years, it's always when I first got into like trap, hip hop, and all this, I always liked people like Drake, obviously. So it would be crazy to have a song with Drake, Damn. Travis. Um, but for right now, like if you ask who I'm listening to and stuff like that, I would love to work with like Future, um, Lil Baby. Uh, who else? Yeah, you're gonna hook me up with these guesses, man. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> bro. Hopefully. Yeah. Drake, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be sick. And then, um, well, Central Sea, I feel like from the UK scene. Um, who else? Outside of rap, I would say people like Tyla. There's this new, like, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I fuck with her a lot. She's sick. Um, who else would I like to work with? Wizkid, he's another, like, African artist from Nigeria. I, I like him a lot. Um, I even say, I wanted to work in K- like in the K-pop scene last time because oh. I was super into K-pop. Like people, okay. like I would love to work with New Jeans actually. Seriously, yeah, I would love to work with New Jeans. Um, Blackpink used to be my dream as well to work with. Uh, who else? I would give what, one more example. I would say oh Chinese artists as well. Like I've been recently like listening to a lot of Chinese artists and yeah, I would love to work with them as well. Yeah. Right. So. Up to the next question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so tell us more about your relationship with Warner Music Malaysia. Um, personally, I have no like personal affiliation with them because I signed under their publishing company, which is not Warner Music. It's called Warner Chappelle. Okay. So that's like the publishing company I'm under. Um, one of my good friends, uh, Senna, he proposed to me the whole deal, and I just thought it would be a good opportunity for me to get my music out there more work with different people and yeah that's how I started with that and then um, yeah he signed me and I only recently signed like last year so oh, I don't see. have like a big big like deal with them it's just like a publishing company where they help me like collect my royalties and stuff like that yeah I would say for any like small producers out there though like if you get a good chance to sign with like a publishing company not a label a publishing company I would say like go for it because when you first start out, it's a little difficult to like collect your own royalties and stuff. So yeah, it's a good opportunity to earn money that way. Yeah. So you don't mind me asking? Yeah. I'm fairly new to whatever you're telling me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have no clue no, what fine. is publishing yeah. and what's a label. It's fine. So do you mind yeah. <laughs> uh, for the audience sake as well, yeah. uh, explain like, you know, what is the difference between the, bo- the two see. things okay. here? So I guess uh, I'm not too, too familiar as well because I'm not really into all the business side of things right now. Okay. But from what I know, publishing companies basically help you help artists, writers, producers, and all these people um, to collect their royalties. Okay. So uh, usually when like, an artist or producer releases a song, they will get a certain percentage from the song, right? So that percentage would usually, that percentage of royalties would be collected by the publisher, whoever signed you. Or you can do it yourself as well, but that's a bit different for every country. Um, but yeah, that's like, I guess the main difference. Labels, I feel like they sign you so that they can help you. Um, basically, it's like a they help invest in your music. So let's say you like one beats from a certain artist or something, uh, for a certain producer, they would be the ones to pay for everything, like the beats and music video all sorts of finances you'll get it from your label and with a label they help you like push your things more um as in like promotion wise they will help you push your things more out there um and yeah i would say that that's the main difference yeah so you mentioned you started at the age of 13 right yeah have you always uh wanted to go into this field and was your love for music uh since young uh, I wouldn't say Yeah I would say I would consider since young um, Definitely like During high school Like pre-high school Like in year 5 Year 6 I started listening to A lot of different types of music EDM I started with I started with A lot of indie Pop Then eventually hip hop Is just one of those Big genres out there That everyone likes right So yeah. Eventually I just tapped into that But yeah That's how I started With that Right Yeah so the other day when we were having lunch together right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you told me that uh, the field that you're in right now is fairly saturated mm. so right. do you mind telling us how and why is your industry is getting more saturated, more saturated. yeah 
Um, I do not have the actual answer factually. I feel like no one knows, but uh, based on my opinion and from my standpoint, the way I see it, like locally, is people are just like when I first produce for local artists. There's not many producers doing it like me and like a lot of other producers that I know as well. However, right now, there's you see a lot more new names and um, yeah, it's uh, it's a definitely a good thing to see. But at the same time, it can be hard for like the OGs to compete with because these new names could definitely be bringing something that old people, not old people, I wouldn't say, but just like the original creators cannot do. Hmm. So, um, but the answer to why it's more saturated, I cannot fully tell. I feel like it's, there's many different views you can look at it point, look at it from. But like, um, for me, I see a lot of people doing it because they see a lot of original people doing it so they think oh it's cool you know i want to try to tap into that i like music too so i want to try making it too and eventually pe- people like this who don't necessarily have that musical background and they just want to start something i feel like it's really cool honestly um even though it's saturated it helps us push our local market out there more to like international viewers and stuff like that so it can be a good and a bad thing i feel like it's more of a bad thing for local people because um it's just very confusing with who's who now and yeah it's just plenty of other competitors out there but international wise i feel like it's definitely better because there's better chances of people blowing up from him like now mm-hmm. and yeah with that i've seen a lot of uh recent um we call this recent blow-ups with like uh certain artists like an example i could give is definitely like uh this artist called lucid rari He's a Malay artist. Okay. Um, he blew up with this song called Lampu Biru with like two other artists on the song. And then right now he has a new song that came out and it's blowing up all over TikTok. It's called like uh, Gadi School. So yeah, it's definitely really, really cool to see all these people blowing up. And it's, help- it's helping us to push our market, our music market like um, further overseas. So yeah. Right. So speaking of which, right? What makes you um, different what from your different. competitors, mm. and what makes you have such a p- big portfolio mm. of artists you have worked with, and what make them want to work with you? Right. I feel like when I first started, I was definitely very, very hungry for opportunities. Okay. I wouldn't say now I'm not. I, I am still, but it's definitely slowed down more because I have school and all this. But it's definitely like not an excuse. But um, I feel like. What makes me, what sets me apart is my hunger. I'm always looking out for opportunities, whether A&Rs or producers are posting on their stories on Instagram, asking send beats or whatever, or artists doing that. So I definitely look out for those. Um, I would say my beats in itself, obviously, I feel like they were, they're more different uh, compared to a lot of local producers, um, which is something I feel like every producer should do, which is look out for something that you want to you um make yourself known for like you have to have a in in the producing world you you always have to say you have to know your own sound and you have to create your own sound right in order to be established and like well known right i wouldn't say i found my true sound yet but i'm definitely getting there and yeah i think that's why a lot of producers and artists uh like what i do that's why i would say i set out for my competitors more yeah right yeah so what is one thing you would like to tell the current generation and the next generation of individuals that would possibly like to touch on not necessarily music producing, yeah. but in the music field? Mm, mm, right. Honestly, I think it's a great field to go into. Uh, however, I don't think it should be taken as a subject in school, like college. <laughs> I mean, you can definitely learn it. Like if you're learning, learning like classical music and stuff like that, I think that's great. But... In terms, of, in terms of producing, you can do it too, but it's not necessary. And I would say if people really want to choose to pursue music, I would just say put in the work, you know, dedicate a few hours a day just trying to make a song or make beats or just learn something about music, you know. It's definitely a great thing to learn about. Um, or even like DJing and stuff like that. It's a great field to go into. It's, it's a very good creative expression, I feel like, and... Yeah, I totally encourage it more to everyone out there, even though it would get more saturated. I feel it's great. Yeah. All right. So, 
I think I have asked you this uh, earlier just now to prepare your producer tank. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so, would you like to share us your producer sure. tank? Sure. Absolutely. In my opinion, right, I find producer tanks a bit irritating. Annoying. Okay. In in certain songs, right. especially in certain um, right. producers, right? Especially the rap scene. Yeah. Like, oh my days! <laughs> like I couldn't go into a song without mm-hmm. listening to, like. This one, this one, uh, producer tank mm-hmm. where it goes like, uh, goes like, no, 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 not, not metro booming. It's mm-hmm. like very common. I can mm-hmm. It's not in my head right now. Okay, okay. Really common. One. Okay. Understand? What was it? Do you know who's like the artist or like who's this? What was the song that you found like the type inside? Of? It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of the producers mm-hmm. in that song. Mm-hmm. It's in Little Moses. Uh, Playlist. Oh, Lil Mosey. Uh, his yeah, his I know album. Which one are you talking about? Is it the A Royce you did right here or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, right? okay. that one is oh my you god. You don't like that? Nah. That used to be my favorite producer, bro. Really? Yeah, I used to like him a lot. Yeah, he's sick. But like, yeah, a lot of people do say that though. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me see if I got one. Uh, I'll just play a beat, and then it's in one of my beats. In yeah, let me see. Right, as you are looking for that uh, producer tag. Yeah. So, do you mind sharing with us mm-hmm. any extraordinary moments or stories that you can share with us while you are in this field? Like um, stories regarding like what? I don't know. Like just with interactions with like people. Yeah, in any extraordinary. Field. Yeah. Uh. I'll get on with the bad ones first, lah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there aren't many bad ones to be honest, but if I had to choose some, I would say it's just mainly people have a money issue in this industry where mm. people are quite selfish and stingy, and people are very yeah selfish. They don't really pay on time. Ah, oh, I see. So that's like a big like thing I want to clear up. People don't repay really on time, and yeah, to those people who definitely pay like not on time. You guys gotta get your shit right, bro. <laughs> Um, but like Other than that I don't think I've really Encountered any bad Bad Like Interactions with people Everyone who I've worked with Is like Pretty nice I would feel like And yeah Everyone treats each other Like equally In terms of good stories I have a few Like just meeting people In general Pulling up to like Studio sessions and stuff Like uh, I would say Going to like uh, This collective's house Called Banhot Dato Mo is in that collective And when I pulled up, it was like all good vibes and stuff. And yeah, going to studio sessions like that are fun. It makes you get to know like the artists better as well, like on a personal level. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Y'all like, besides making music, y'all can chat about life and stuff like that. I think it's, yeah, pretty sick. Uh, I would say going to concerts as well. Like I recently got invited to a concert last year by uh, Dato Mo and his whole crew, like Ban Huat. Um, go yeah, going there. I saw a lot of people I recognize, and yeah, it's just pretty cool meeting up with people I've seen online for a while, <laughs> and uh, finally getting the chance to say hi to them is pretty cool. Uh, one moment that I wouldn't forget though is like back in twenty twenty one, I had a song released with this Singaporean artist, um, and I don't know how it ended up on Yuna's. Yuna had a like a Twitch stream back then where she would listen to like new music every week, like lo- by local artists, and she played that song on her uh, stream and I was like there's no way she heard my song because Yuna is like huge right locally and internationally like so when I first saw that I was like that's crazy <laughs> and like I even had to like screen record the whole moment down and it's, yeah it's pretty surreal yeah definitely yeah so what was her thoughts about the your song which song that song yeah, that yeah. Went on it. I was like when it first released, I liked the song obviously, and when I first heard the demo and everything, I loved it. But when it ended up on that stream, I was like, "Yeah, it was." I don't know. I'm not much of a. I don't really get excited over many things, but that moment really like, you Have know, made me happy, and like I was like, "Okay, it kind of paid off," you know. So I was really happy about that for sure. Yeah. Right. So, actually. You're kind of low profile sort of music mm. producers compared to internationally known ones yeah. like Metro Booming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And many, many more. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm not, you know, into yeah, that yeah. scene, so yeah. I, I can't name more. But yeah. 
yeah what's with the low profile and everything because mm. you have every reason yeah. to be out there you know right, right, your right. name your face everywhere yeah. online yeah i would say it's a personal choice for sure like yeah. i just chose to keep it more low-key like on my instagram and stuff because i have like not just people who know about music following me but my friends as well mm. like my personal life is all there so definitely i w- wouldn't want to like push it out so much like yeah. if people i want people to be like oh if people know then they know i wouldn't want to like push in people's face and be like oh yeah i produce music you know <laughs> yeah but uh it's, uh it's more of a personal choice i feel like i just don't like to put my things too out there unless at a certain point it naturally happens then i'm forced to i guess but even then i would still keep it pretty low-key yeah so i was also quite surprised yeah with that aspect yeah. being that you accepted my podcast invitation mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i was like it got me thinking yeah. hmm, this guy's a bit uh mysterious yeah in a sense where he doesn't want to appear online mm-hmm. but he's in my podcast mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's a great pleasure having you no it's today yeah i appreciate it a lot yeah and yeah, yeah all your respect I hope I didn't offend you. No, 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 absolutely not. I tro- I told Derek that I would get on it, you know, totally like for free or whatever. Like I didn't want anything out of it, and it was purely because I met you through class, and uh, yeah, I thought you were a cool guy, and you know, you're doing something on your own like me as well. So I fully respect it, and yeah, by all means, I would like to support more local people like you. That's Appreciate why I hopped it. on it. Yeah, exactly. Right, thank you for your time. I think that's oh, good, it for bro. this podcast. Do you want to still hear the producer? Yeah, tag? actually, okay, I'm right. waiting for that. I'll play a beat, and then there's like what my producer tag is in this as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yo, Mark, you going in? No okay. Damn. It's fire, bro. So could you disclose, right? Yeah. Just a rough figure. Because mm-hmm. when I ask this <laughs> yeah. to many people, they're like quite shy about right. it. Right. How much averagely <laughs> do you earn per beat? Because this is like such an untapped, uh, in a sense where no one has really exposed how much they have earned yeah. in terms of beats yeah. and everything. This industry yeah. is such a uh low key one mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so would yeah. you like to just give us a just rough estimate rough estimate average? yeah hmm let me think if i can disclose it it really depends with everyone you work with but is it three figures four figures i would say per beat right now it's definitely a more than three figures wow yeah i would say it goes up it can even go up to five figures but yeah i try to keep it below that for now yeah so do you earn like royalty fees like in a sense where i do because i recently okay. signed with um warner chappelle and before that i wasn't recollecting really my own royalties because mm. i wasn't above 18 yet so if i had to do it i had to register under like some local association to collect my royalties and that was a bit of a hassle so instead i just signed with warner and i let them collect my royalties now mm. yeah yeah but i do oh. earn from that yeah that's great wow Actually, for real this time, thank you so much for your time. It's all good, bro. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as we did. Yeah. Do remember to subscribe to this channel. Look out for him. Mm-hmm. You never know what sort of fire he can come up with. Mm-hmm. Some magic. So, yeah, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you, bro. Hey, yo, Mark, you going in, okay?